publish it on blog, then it doesn't fit. Do I, I don't know, you know, it's confusing. Um, so let me show you what I, what I got here. Um, so the, the, I, I played around with a couple, uh, uh, couple prompts and this, this, this prompt actually follows the question where I said, so what's a pattern language? And I did a decent job of explaining it. So, mm -hmm. so then, um, I gave it, uh, and, and it made very short versions of the, the patterns, but still it's pretty useful. And so mm -hmm. I can imagine doing the, doing wow. this a little bit bigger, um, and to me, it ends up looking again like a massive wiki, a whole massive wiki on its own subdomain. Yeah. Is that overkill? Is that crazy? No, no. It... I think this makes sense. Yeah. And where, like, you know, like, I, I was thinking, even like, uh, as a general rule, like, I mean, for the hour, I would just like, same shape. I think that's a wiki uh, we have said. Like, uh, yeah. we, like prompts could be notes, notes could be prompt. So the, the page could be actually the full prompt, unless we hit any limits. Peter, are you going to yeah. post this anyplace? Um, I like, I'd like to flesh it out a little bit more and make it. I know a bunch of people who would be interested. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, huh? Yeah. Isn't yeah. It? And, and it's then crazy. the funny thing is it's like, oh, I don't know if those are actually the related patterns I would pick, but that makes but... me think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's like, it's like this thing is sucking us into system three thinking. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. System yeah. one is like a knee jerk response. System two is engage the gears. System three is like, oh, gears just got sucked out of my head into some device which is collaborating with me. What? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, th this comes back to what Aaron was saying. You know, is this useful? I, the the thing that chat, people are using, you know, ChatGPT a lot for is to generate lots of content cheaply, which is not really a problem that needed solving because there was already lots of people generating lots of cheap content and that lots more of it is not going to necessarily help but they're going to need to put that somewhere they're going to need to put that content somewhere, right um so that that touches on what pete was saying where do i put this do i spool up a whole massive wiki for each thing well you know what my answer is put it on your hub yeah i, like it. I said it. <laughs> how does uh how does my hub Make make in each of the little things or the the big things accessible, if I may ask. Well, um, I, I just I shared in chat. In fact, I, I've written you. Um, a, I'm writing a blog post, blog post which at yeah. the moment is a, a briefing for you and Bill and Tim, my developer, for next Monday. I've, I've shared it in the chat, so anybody on this call can look at it. But don't share it any widely because it's still a draft. It's still just a briefing. It's, eventually, it might become a. A blog post but this is the only way i can really think things through mm -hmm. is to write it as a blog post and i would like to see how chat gpt could help me with that right. you know that's my personal interest and so what i would like to see is to be able to go into my back office and access chat gpt whilst looking at my all of my notes pri private and public notes but also on the front office people will be able to ask my hub what does matthew like about this or you know, um, write a blog post in Matthew's voice using the content that he's hubbed about X, Y, and Z, and just buy me a coffee for that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that's basically the answer to your question is in that blog post. Big. Okay, thanks. I, for what it's worth, by the way, Jerry's got the same kind of wish to open the contents of his brain. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a little bit like free Jerry's brain, what I just described, isn't it? Could we, could, we, could, could we maybe start, this is a moment, maybe, there's a moment there we go. Maybe we could start, start uh, like just writing all this, this in proposal as just as the commons or the knowledge commons or the generative commons, which are like, you know, like Asam came up, because I think that will be the lingua franca to some extent. Well, it's, no, it's not lingua franca, it's more like a common term. <laughs> so the, the, the commons itself will be, uh, yeah. But, um, it just to, so uh, you know, we make it more um, uh, platform agnostic to some extent. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess. 
So then we can think about like, you know, how to do, how to write pattern languages in the genetic commands. Uh, well, I vote for a massive wiki yeah. for us to all play with ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. The, the FOTL ChatGPT massive wiki. Oh, what a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think that it would be fun. That way, all we would need to do would have a, a very simple syntax for, you know, this is the prompt, this is the output. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit of structure so people would find their way. But, it, you know, uh, I think, Pete, you described your, your hot air as a hairball. It's not a hairball. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a website with chapters, and you go through each yeah. chapter. You go from one to another. Mm -hmm. that's, not a, that's not a hairball. But I, lots of things are hairballs, but that's not it. And TFT Maps not a hairball, and I think we could probably do something mm -hmm. quite quickly in Massive Wiki for this. Wouldn't require any custom code, yeah. just a just a custom syntax. Yeah. yeah. So you can imagine a setting where you are like each weekly link is a prompt, right? And like uh, to some extent, the pages that exist on Markdown are, you know, uh, providers for that weekly link, and you could hook up like a uh, generative models as providers as well. So when if you own one day, and then you have like a perfect activity, which is like you know the red link in the wiki, you are like, well, there's no red links anymore. Uh, and to some extent, that's a great opportunity for the person who wants that link to, to exist to choose from the generated inputs and say, like, I'm, I'm actually going to store it. And then it becomes a, a wiki page, uh, which, of course, gives the commons, which can be used to train the models, as we have seen, you know, like uh, this fine tuning, you know, the, the fine tuning experiment based on shared GPT. Yep. Uh, so that could be massive wiki for sure. Like, uh, I think, uh, yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. It's interesting because um, Pete and I were on pre jury spin on Monday, and we didn't have a lot of the people. A couple of people couldn't make it or whatever, and we had a bit of a, a crisis mm -hmm. of, of free jury's brain. And we're like, where do we go? Because the experiment to export my brain and, and feed it to Kyle. Go ahead, Valencia. Don't, don't cancel it before I go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, because... and, and, and we ended up with maybe we need a recharter for this. And, and I ended up also saying that there's stuff coming from the brain and integration with GPT that's actually really, really interesting that sort of puts a twist on it. Um, but this conversation sort of puts a different twist on it as well. And I don't know, I think we got to, I'm, I'm inspired to figure that out and see where this is. Cool. I have to go, guys. It's like, well, after, well, after my bedtime. Thanks for visiting. Hey, thank you for hanging you this here. long. Yeah, really appreciate uh, it. Yeah. Uh, see you, see you soon. I hope, and uh, have a good have a good day over there in the US. Yeah. Catch awesome. you later. Bye. Sleep well. Yeah. Uh, Flancian, when we when we're done, send, if you'll send me a, yes. a link to the video, I will upload it in the awesome. same playlist where awesome. I've got it. Thanks so much. Yeah. <clears throat> what else? Too bad we got nothing to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> It's fun. I mean, this is like Kyle, our friend Kyle Shannon started up an AI salon because he felt like this moment was very similar to early web days when he started the World Wide Web Artist Consortium in Manhattan, which is how I met him. And then how I met a bunch of buddies uh, who were still friends uh, in that community. And it was like, like a, a place where people were sharing, how do I build this web thing, like and avoid the blink tag and do cool stuff. Uh, and we're at that moment again. It's very, it's, yeah. it's lovely. I, I have to say, of course, you know, in capitalism, uh, which I feel like as a, as a, a consigna, as a, you know, as, just as a banner, I guess, I think you are. Uh, but, you know, like, I keep thinking, how can we leverage this moment for, like, the commons, right? Which is why, you know. So, and to some extent, you know, you will, you can imagine that some at some point people, like, uh, like more people, I mean, uh, we get up to the fact that what they have written online, what they have, uh, you know, uh, posted online, has a lot of value for for, for them because it, it, it will allow them to like fine tune. It will allow them to like you know uh, teach models how to do tasks that are interesting, and uh, and also as they see people selling them back their data, which is you know what happens. Uh, you could imagine that uh, leading people to wanting to have their data. But not having it because they, they wrote it in, in, in you know uh, World Gardens like Twitter and so on, so so uh, so maybe that's an, a, a, an opening to you know like prepare for that and say like okay, how can we actually make it easy for people like to you know 
to curate their, their own data into the commons. So like siphoning, bridging, importing, and so on. Uh, that could be one direction. And it goes back to the inter interoperability, to the thinking tools. Uh, so maybe that's the common thread here. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, beyond free Jerry's brain, free everybody's brain. Yeah, free. I, I, I want to liberate everybody's free brain. All I brains. mean, part of my beef is with yeah. how terrible intellectual property overprotection has become yeah. uh, and how we're denuding the commons and how we don't know what we know yes. and how we're unable to solve problems together, partly because we're not sharing the solutions other than in these different little separate nuggets that are not connected. And then the web is beautiful because it creates the beginnings of those connections, those links, those little filaments. That's lovely, but there's so much more to do. So, so this is why, 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 I mean, of course, I think of, of things as Agora shaped, but you know, like Agora something for the commons, but like, if you could imagine, like I saw uh, just today, like I, I think there's many articles going on about like fine tuning different models. If, if you could imagine, you know, like, like uh, targeting, may, maybe we target in a few months, you know, uh, a tool chain that lets you fine tune language models with like a massive wiki or an Agora or, a, or any, any kind of like a knowledge commons then maybe, you know, that could also make it so that then people are, start thinking about, okay, so first I get something like a commons and then I fine tune it, essentially a repository and so on. So maybe it's like a, a, a sort of like a, a enticing for, 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 for people to like uh, move closer to wanting their data uh, back. Matthew GBD. Um, but, you know, I don't know, like, so essentially, uh, how, how can this help the revolution <laughs> as, a, as a question? Um, and I guess, you know, like uh, problem solving and, you know, like sketching solutions. I asked, I, I asked uh, JVD how to, how to like run the revolution. <laughs> uh, and he actually had pretty good ideas. Yes. Generic. How do, so how do we, how do we run a pro commons revolution would be a great prop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, for every day, <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yeah, completely. Um, so I guess uh, we have discussed this even before uh, UBT, and it, like makes sense to discuss in this context because of the leverage point and so on. But like, I guess we discussed several times, like how can we build something together that uh, has has value for uh, you know non technical users or like for more users and so on. And like I think that's uh, we are we have been working towards that, no, but. Um, I guess I go back, I don't know, maybe we want to like give it a few more sessions to like, you know, think through about like the implications of GPT and so on, but then like try to shoot for something this year, still like uh, something we could ship, I don't know, together. That'd be uh, cool. I, yeah. I have trouble mentally bounding that exercise, right. but I think we, we could have conversations to bound it and we could ask chat GPT how to bound it. Yes, the podcast, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and then there's so many places to talk about this and share out what we're figuring out. Right. It's cool. <clears throat> OK. Any other topics, or are we spent for the day? I've got a quick one, which is I, I, I uh, I moved. I I haven't been posting on Twitter since December, well, no. and I I won't start. Um, but I guess I guess I want to start posting to Twitter. If you want, if you want to read the stuff that I would have posted to Twitter but aren't anymore, go here. And right now, the place to do that is to Mastodon, and Mastodon is is interesting and fun, and it's not quite a replacement for Twitter either. So, so I guess I'm thinking of I I don't I don't know I I the the best the best solution I've got right now is uh, either go to my Mastodon or go to my um, my ListMonk instance. So ListMonk is a open source simple version of Substack more or less. Um, I mean it's not it's not nearly as complicated as Substack, but 
it's a you know a newsletter subscription newsletter newsletter publishing solution um, email publishing so the, the problem with it actually it's it's a really nice tool um, the person who wrote it it looks like he wrote it for his company and then it's open sourced um, okay. and it's well maintained it looks like decent system and stuff nice. the main problem with it is it was built to be kind of one list instead of um, hosting multiple lists. So um, it's got a hack in it that will let you do multiple lists, but it doesn't do the archives in a multiple list format yet. All the archives are in one list. So anyway, that needs to get fixed. But if I'm not using Twitter and I'm not, not using Facebook for, you know, for um, philosophical reasons, um, Mastodon is part of the solution, but not all of it. And so I think another part of the solution is uh, like a personal email list or something like that. I don't know. And for reasons that are sort of beyond my understanding, they're published, they're post, <clears throat> they're promoting Substack notes as a Twitter replacement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. I, I got, I, I, uh, Aram, you're muted if you're trying yeah. to. Oh, to be clear, they weren't promoting it as a, as a Twitter replacement. Elon decided it was a Twitter replacement. <laughs> oh. And now it has been positioned. Now it is a Twitter he's replacement. treating it like that way. I mean, it's a, different, it's a different social model. It's a different network model. It's a different uh -huh. thing. Notes are fine. But again, like none of these things are really a Twitter replacement because Twitter is not software. Not really. <laughs> yeah. Twitter is a system of moderation and community and interaction and, and brand value. Uh, and reach. Which you cannot. Mm -hmm. And what? And reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and reach, which is not uh, no. not easily replicatable. But I'm actually, I was surprised to hear how few users Twitter seems to have in relation to the major platforms. I was like, wait, wait, that's all the number of people they've got? Okay, so this is actually really interesting. I did a Twitter thread on this this morning. Um, I, how did I land on that? I feel like I've just hit and sunk a sub. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, the or, thing or about Bowser. Twitter is that it is a it is an amplification platform, which is to say, Twitter does not have many users, and Twitter does not itself supply a great deal of traffic, but Twitter is the origin point for sharing that happens elsewhere. Um, and so Twitter's influence is more as a routing tool than as a social network or uh, a media platform in and of itself. There, I put yeah. a link to the thread because I did just this Thank morning. You. Um, the, the issues of that is of, of replication, right? The, the reason... I have this in the thread, but right, like the joke in Silicon Valley is anyone could build Twitter in a weekend. Right. Um, <laughs> um, and like from a technical perspective, sure, but that's not what Twitter is. Um, and the question is like, is it going to be, I won't just repeat the thread, but basically like what Elon is doing is a mistake in terms of understanding what Twitter is, mm -hmm. right? He's treating it like it's medium or he's treating it like it's sub stack and he's treating those other platforms like their competition, but it's, it's the exact opposite, right? They, it, if Twitter retains itself, um, which seems more and more unlikely, Twitter is an amplifier for those platforms, but in, but is amplified in return. Um, I like Twitter is not a social network. It is an event space mm -hmm. for dropping new pieces of content. So I will say that it is a social network, but it's also like a, yeah, I will say it's like the connect. It's like a connect or something like a, it's like a, a RSS feed. It replaces RSS feeds to some extent for most people. No? So, so to some extent, it's like a, a bit of a parasite of the internet. So <laughs> In the sense happened, that it's an issue of the commons. Yeah, what happened when Twitter started was, I realized that my attempts to use Google Reader to read stiff stuff in RSS were terrible because I would I, I was flooded with way too many articles that were way too long. I would read three of them, give up and move on and feel incredibly frustrated with the experience. And then on Twitter, 
because everybody was forced to compress into basically haiku, like I was like, oh, now I know I want to go read a long read, but mm -hmm. this is a much better way to get through a lot of things because there's a ah. rich, it's like, it's like you landed in the plankton mains in the plank, plankton stream in the ocean. Right, right. And it's also like a bit of like, it forces, yeah, faster sum summarization, which now you can say maybe actually can generate it, but you know, but yep. then, um, so on the Twitter exit paths, uh, I, I think yeah, what, what it's so uh, in this, is this true? Like, well, like what Alan says, right? It's like uh, a Mastodon in itself won't replace it, not only because it's a, it doesn't have the same connectivity, but also because it's not sufficient. It, it just, uh, it's also coming on the internet, but like, I don't know if you've seen Lemmy, uh, Peter, which is, it's like Reddit, but uh, on activity path. It just shows like, you know, you can have like, yeah, I have seen it. yeah you have, okay. Uh, what's, what's it called? I haven't again? seen that one. Lemmy. Uh, yeah, I put it in the notes. Uh, I, okay. I know of a few companies <laughs> that, that run one. Uh, and of course, they, they have a thing that you can still see it from Mastodon. You just, you, you sort of see the headers or the titles. And if you go to Lemmy, you can actually get through and see the whole content and the threads and so on. Uh, so, um, so, so I guess you know um, that could be it, it. Could be nice if whatever the your exit path is, I guess is activity path base, just because it will give you like the network. Yep. Right. Agreed. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Is Lemmy what Delicious could have been become? I have well, it's like decentralized delicious. Right, right. But, which is which is good. Yeah. Yeah. There's also decentralized good reads, by the way. You know, huh. if, yeah. if, if you yes. <laughs> if you missed the parallel universe where Goodreads didn't go to hell because it was bought by Amazon, I guess, and <laughs> and so on, uh, maybe yeah. it's a below. <laughs> In the alternate universe where it's still free. Yeah. And alive. Oh, oh my god, oh, I'll be doing yeah. alternate history stuff with ChatGPT. Completely. Oh, god. Yeah. <clears throat> I, so I Pete, asked if, yeah, yeah. if we lose you into one of those dimensions, I am going to get sad and miss you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on, uh, going back to the bootcamp and so on, uh, or like, I guess, I don't know. Uh, or you can imagine, like, uh, for the podcast, I, I'm just brainstorming now, so it's stop me. But it's like, you know, we all generate things and we are like, uh, it's cool and we share it. Maybe like a, a format in which, like, you know, N people come and they, they show one thing. It's like when you play your YouTube video in like a YouTube party, back in the day, you know, when you everybody plays one, like you know, yeah. show the best result you got from JDBT last week. Uh, as a, I like it. Yeah. We could do an exquisite mega corpse performance art <laughs> yes. thing where everybody contributes something generated between them and generative AI, right? <clears throat> except they're except they're sequenced together. Right. 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 And Aram, you had something I think you were going to jump in with, if you still remember it, when I was asking if we were ready to wrap the call. Oh. Uh, Which may or may not have been the thread you just pointed us to. No, it, was, it would have been the thread. <laughs> uh, unless somebody brings it up, I don't promote Twitter stuff anymore. Um, it's just my brain works better in that format for whatever reason, writing in, in that format. In I mean. Twitter format, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Something about like the the specific level of the limitation. That, uh, you know, like uh, what you call it? Mastodon has too many characters and it doesn't work. Yep. Well, Twitter has just the right number of characters that I can refine paragraphs to ideas to focused paragraphs, um, and then create threads in such a way that. It really works, and I can't replicate it anywhere else, so I haven't quit entirely. Uh, um, yeah, but you could run your instance yeah. with the same limits. Yeah, yeah, I could build, I could build a Mastodon iteration or something like that. Oh I actually have a bunch of um, home hosting that I'm setting up because I don't want to pay for it. Um, nice. That I'm probably gonna do uh, <laughs> myself. Oh, well, Mastodon so much hosting to do it yourself. It is for Mastodon. Mastodon hosting gets expensive pretty fast, even yeah. a solo, mm -hmm. even yeah. a solo one. Um, I have a nice heavy activity. Uh, sorry, I have a nice heavy, whatever the latest Raspberry Pi version. It has a web server. I stuck a three hundred, 
what is it five four hundred gig USB key in there? Um, it's ready to go. I just need to do the work of setting up the web server the way I want to and map some dynamic IPs to to um, domain addresses, and it's good to go. A, a long time. Sorry. I actually really am interested in Blue Sky. I saw you mentioned that. Yeah, uh, I got two invites up. today. <clears throat> so oh. I think they opened. Oh, it's, it's running. Yeah. Okay, I was not aware it was actually right. I know, yeah. yeah. I, I wrote Vaporwave at some point. Uh, vaporware. <laughs> vaporwave is a gender. Mm. Uh, at some point, uh, in the sense, you know, when, when Twitter was, I guess I was uh, suspicious of it. Uh, but uh, yeah, then I saw that it was more concrete. And now I'm, yeah, uh, invites are making the rounds. Yeah, I was initially a little dismissive of it, but um, the say they hired all of the engineers who were working on Hyper. And I really love Hyper. So, mm. and I saw when I reviewed the protocol, there's a bunch of Hyper stuff that's definitely just in there. Yeah. Um, Paul Frassi and, is amazing. Yeah. What? Which? Paul Frassi. You know, oh yeah, Paul. You know. Yeah, he's so great. Yeah. Everything he does is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. When he got in, I was like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's what I started paying attention. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I, I think that one could be really cool. I don't know where it's going to go exactly, but like it looks like it's directionally correct. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. I guess I went back. Uh, also, uh, you know, Peter, if you are looking for the alternative steel, uh, it, there is a chance, uh, uh, yeah, Blue Sky will work. So, so that could yeah, be. I, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in Blue Sky. Yeah. It might work. I um, am. Into the into Maston steel, I guess, because it seems like the best uh, activity path. I mean, more on I, you know, it's it's actually really good. It's it's and it's just a different thing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I guess you know, my I've got uh, I've got a semi distant relative, a second cousin who I discovered via you know genealogy research mm -hmm. late in life. You know, and I'm like, okay. She used to, you know, I, so I was publishing hot, my hot air thing, and she would love this, but you know, she's not going to see it on Mastodon. She's just not ever going to be the Mastodon person. So, mm -hmm. what do I do about that? You know, I it, it's funny. I, I feel that I guess I, I I know why now. Um, I'm the same way with Facebook. I I stay off of Facebook basically and LinkedIn actually. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter, I actually knew and loved and, and spent a lot of time there and got a lot of value out of it. And um, mm -hmm. unlike Facebook or LinkedIn, Twitter Twitter did feel like home. And now I miss I miss it. You know, yeah. it's not the thing anymore. Yeah, it's important, at least. Uh, I've been there's a really cool project for archiving. And so at least my my archives from Twitter, I've pulled on. Um, it needs to be updated. I did it right when Twitter was initially going, so it's only up to uh, the end of last year. But which uh, is it a service or? It's oh, um, yeah. Tweetback, which is an eleventy based Twitter yeah. archiving tool. Um, maybe I'll make a massive wiki one. Yeah. Um, I have two quick things. Um, I know we're probably trying to wrap up. Uh, one of my so my. One of my observations after playing with hot air is that we're the, one of so a, a thing a a, um, a reflex that, that we have from the olden days is like oh there's a new tool that makes things faster so you make you use a new tool to make one thing faster and you go wow that was so amazing look it only took me you know 20 minutes it would have taken me 20 hours or 40 hours before so the 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 step beyond that a few steps beyond that what it's going to be is look i can make 200 of them in in a day um so write you know write that same story but with different people with different locations um write the young adult version write the kids version write you know the the romance version write the science fiction version write the you know and so so one of the things is creators are going to be able to cycle through a bunch more um a bunch more you know i, I maybe i want to write a historical uh, alter, alternate history novel or something like that you know you can go to chat gpt and say you know uh give me give me 20 scenarios of of alternate history and it says well there's the one where the us lost world war ii there's the one where the us lost uh, the revolutionary war there's the one where 
um, uh, France uh, prevailed over over Britain. There's the one where Holland didn't become a superpower, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So you do like 20 of those, and then you tell it to do a script treatment or a novel treatment or a story treatment for each of the, each of the five that you like best. And you go, well, I don't like any of these, but this one's fun. And then you blow that out, right? Just like going over and over and over and doing what used to, you know, we, you used to, in the olden days, we used to write novels once because it took so bloody long. Now you're going to write it a hundred times in you know a thousand different variations. Um, you'll never finish most of them, but you might finish twenty of them, and you might publish twenty of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. so this is actually a really interesting piece of literary history for this. Have you ever seen Plato? No. Mm. Okay, Plato. so this was a Thank guy you. who had to write dime store novels book of all plots to make a living <clears throat> awesome. um, and so he came up with the master book of all plots right um and each one <laughs> is a plot seed that interconnects it's all predates um the internet here yeah right you've got plot seeds that inter or predates computers actually um that interconnect with different characters and different plot points um and it's exactly that, right? It's a Whoa. formula for churning out fiction very mm -hmm. quickly. Um, it's fascinating as an artifact, but obviously it's not a sustainable uh, career. I mean, it, it was then. He pulled it off. But um, nowadays, I don't think it works quite as well. <laughs> very cool. 1928. It's, it's, yeah, it's a fascinating little artifact. Um, I love it. As somebody who's always uh, been very interested in narrative structure, it's like a very fascinating thing to uh, take yes. a look at. I have to hop Thank to you. another meeting. <laughs> okay. But check that out. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Right. yeah. Thanks, Aaron. <coughs> Love that. Wow. <clears throat> and I've got a section in my brain about Ur plots, and there's a couple different mm -hmm. models for how many Ur plots there are. Right. right. Like the uh, classification system for folk tales and so on, right? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. Very nice. Actually, I've got a bunch of stuff on Orplots. I'll share the link in the. The top. other thing I was going to mention was uh, Aram is gone, unfortunately. But um, uh, speaking of Raspberry Pis, there's a, a new fun Raspberry Pi <laughs> thing out, the RP2040. <laughs> um, and then people put together. So in this one, this is the Raspberry Pi here, uh, right here. And then this is a little uh, board that somebody put together that uh, has a tiny little breadboard thing on it and a tiny little display. And so um, it seems like a really fun thing to play with. Uh, so it's um, getting somewhere. Yeah, it's getting somewhere. So one of the places there's there's like Raspberry Pi worked with like five vendors, Adafruit and three or four others. Uh, one one of them is Pi Maroni and I like theirs the best. Hmm. Um, and then there's, uh, if you're in the US, it's a little bit tricky. It's it's better to order in the US rather than from overseas, from the UK or whatever. Hmm. So pieshop.us is actually a real company. Hmm. Cool, cool. I guess the, the one of the cool things is that there's a W version of it with built-in Wi-Fi. So on the little stick you know it's it's ready to go wow wow and and talk to <clears throat> michael python and all that kind of stuff super cool thank you cool. <laughs> my brain is full <laughs> cool. for today yeah, yeah yeah for today yeah yeah we'll have to empty it and come back yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. just flush the buffers um cool. which is what kids do these days when they cram for tests right all days, no? Watch, All these, not watch these days. the buffers, <laughs> turn to the next subject, don't remember a thing. In fact, um, uh, Mondays uh, at Ziba, I do a mind meld, and there's a young guy who's been joining the conversations, and he was like, yeah, I, it turned out in school I learned that I could memorize stuff. And so when he got a test, he would basically, from memory, write down the test equations, the, the, the test problem. He would just write it down in the margin, and then he would look at that and adapt it to solve the current problem. And his his teacher was like, I've never seen anything like this. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, you know, where did you where did you get the copy of the test exam? And he's like, I, I just memorized it. Like, it's, so it's there. 
I'm like, okay, that's, that's really interesting. <laughs> but, oh, but, and the reason I told that story is that he said, and the idea that I would be learning how things work or internalizing the models of physics or chemistry or whatever, none of that happened. <clears throat> like he, he didn't, yeah. he wasn't understanding how the thing worked. He just learned this memory trick that worked for him to pass tests and that was good. Yeah. It was oh, really interesting. Very much to SI guys here as well. <laughs> right. Yes. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Over. I'll stop Bye. recording before I forget. Stop recording. Perfect. Thank oh. you.